So I said, uh, I want you to take it, and uh, you're probably going to curse me at some points as, as you get dragged through this, but somebody's got to do it who'll stick with it. And, uh, and he agreed to do it. But, and I'll close and, and pass this over to him and, with, with this. Years ago, when we were dealing with, uh, with Brown versus the board, we went to, over to the administration, Howard's father and I, and a host of other lawyers and county school administrators and so on, went over to the administration building, filled up the, the huge auditorium they had then. Since then, it's been chopped up. We had two guys coming down here from Washington to enlighten us. One was a deputy attorney general, and the other was a head of, of um, the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, I think it was then. And uh, what had happened was one, uh, one group, one agency of the government would tell us, okay, your plan's okay. And then the other one would sue us. In other words, <laughs> we couldn't get a straight answer out of them about anything. We've tried, all we're trying to do is comply. What is it we need to do and we'll do it. You know, this was long past the period of massive resistance, as they call it. We just want to know how to get it done and get to about having the kids talk. So there's one, one fellow from Washington stood up and said, I sense that, uh, that y'all are not you, you know, you think we are hostile or that we're antagonistic to you or that we're, we're unreasonable. Said, so, please, please don't take that view. What we want you to know is we're down here from Washington as your friends. We're going to help you with this <laughs> stuff. And uh, Howard Manning Sr. was sitting two rows behind me and, and in his stage whisper that you could have heard out on Jones Street, he's, he leans over and he says, yeah and Jesus Christ had Judas Iscariot. <laughs> and that's the, kind of, uh, that's the kind of stubbornness I thought we needed, and so I handed it over to my good friend Howard Manning, and I quit the bench and went off to practice law. <laughs> Judge Manning. <laughs> Twenty-six years ago, on this very morning, at 6.05, I was at 12,000 feet on Mount Rainier going up. So I'll never forget the 21st day of June. Uh, that was an easier mountain to climb than the Leandro case. <laughs> when the Chief Justice got me that day and he said, you'll either die or retire with it. Uh, and here I am and I'm 60, be 68 years old next month, I'm not ready to retire. What we had, and I'm gonna spin through the, the balance of the appellate case or my piece, because y'all are outstanding educators. I'm not sitting in the room with people that are riding a school with a 50% composite that look at their children that don't think they can learn, don't really give a damn about them. That's not you. You don't need a lecture from me about your performance in the classroom. So what, what we did was this case I called up Eddie Spees, who was in the Attorney General's office, said, can I have a copy of the opinion? And he sent me down this, a copy of the opinion, I read it, and I said, oh hell, this is going to be something else. <laughs> <laughs> because the Supreme Court had clearly given the quality, a quantitative definition of what we had, they had to meet. And, and it all boils down to today, Burley's view was 21st century, not late 19th century, about where children ought to be. And when you get to the end of the 12th grade, you ought to be able to go to college, if that's what you want, go to the community college and not have to take remedial math and reading, which four out of every $10 in the community college is what we spend on remediation today. Uh, and you should be able to get a job. Of course, there aren't any jobs anymore. They're all in foreign lands where people have really good educations. 
because they don't have TV. And, and sexting or texting, I guess they do that. Over there. <laughs> so, uh, and they don't have Representative Weiner uh, to, 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 to uh, pick on or distract them from doing their algebra or their uh, English. The, the, the lawsuit had multiple small counties, and then we had what I call the big boys and girls, the money people, Wake, CMS, all the ones that are scared to death that if somebody got a dime, they, were going, they need to get a dollar. So they were all in the lawsuit, and it was too big for one judge or anybody to deal with if you dealt with all these counties. But based on my experience, uh, being from North Carolina all my life, uh, I, and knowing the state, I knew that a small county that was poor, and these were small Halifax anywhere else, the problems were gonna be the same, no matter where you were, whether you're stuck in Northampton, or you're stuck in Robson, or you're stuck in Hoke. So what I wanted to do was make the case manageable because the problems were gonna be the same. So we, we got together and they thought they picked it, but I did. We picked Hope County, which had bookend, bookend uh, middle schools, one high school, and a bunch of elementary schools. And they had about 5,500 children. And they, they had all these problems that they were blaming on the lack of money. So we agreed to what we call bifurcate the case. In other words, I took, told Durham and Wake and everybody, I said, you can, you can play with us. You can be part of the case, but we're not gonna deal with big city problems. We're gonna deal with small county problems first. So we went from there. We never, the other thing is that I didn't want anybody from Washington in little pointy toe shoes, these lawyers make, you know, they make $500 an hour and they got pointy toe little shoes. And they come down from Washington and think we're stupid. I told them, I don't want anybody from Washington, D.C. in this case. And we had one little boy came down and talked to us about FERPA one morning like we were a bunch of fools in the conference room. And he got banned from the lawsuit. He was told, I told, I told him, don't bring that guy down here again because he thinks we live in tents and eat clay. But, there's just something about that attitude that has always irritated the hell out of me. <laughs> we, we graduated from law school. We passed the bar. You know, my goodness, we can read and write and count to 10 on our fingers. I guess we can manage a lawsuit. So for, in, for 90, in lawsuits that are this big, you've got to have what they call discovery. That is, everybody's got to run up the attorney's fees by taking depositions of everybody and killing off two or three acres of pine trees to do the paper. So we, we worked through, what I did is I said, the heck with the courtroom. So we'd come up to my courthouse on the 10th floor, close the door of the conference room, and we did everything there. So if they had a contest between two lawyers mad at each other, it all got worked out and nobody had to go to court and spend a lot of money. The lawsuit went to trial the day before hurricane, the one that flooded Princeton. Uh, uh, Floyd. 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 I still remember Fran, because right. I didn't have any electricity for 14 days. Right. And no ice for the bourbon either. But the, uh, <laughs> you know, this was Floyd. It's, he it's hell not to have ice. It's, and so, the, it, I'm just going to give you, uh, Burley was talking about the money piece. There are still lawyers in this case today that money is the panacea for everything. They still don't understand that this is not a money case. This is a quality case. So we went and put on all these. We had, we had these people from up north taking pictures of the Hope County playground next to the courthouse and complaining about the fact that the the swings were old. I mean, the, there was double wax in South Hope Middle School had a wax build up. And, and they had a spongy ceiling in the alternative school, which by the way happened to be the town of Rayford's uh, 
uh, little theater that was operating, but it was a spongy floor. And all this stuff about buildings and books and nothing about education until Jay Robinson, bless his heart, showed up one day and sat up there in his great inimitable fashion and said, Judge, I can educate a child with a candle and a log. Just give me the books and the tools because children can learn anywhere. 